Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's finally time. The time has arrived. I can now give my match preview, my match predictions for the big game this Sunday. It's back. It's the third one of the season. The third of, as we know now, five this season. Celtic will take on Rangers at Ibrox for the second time this season. Uh, in the league where things have got a little bit closer. This is the first time I've sat down on YouTube uh, and said that things are decently close between Celtic and Rangers. Ultimately, I think they're still at golfing class between Celtic and Rangers. I'm going to get that off my chest straight away. And I know right away the Rangers fans who have clicked in this video ultimately disagree with me. But I'm going to explain. I'm going to give my point. Don't jump to conclusions and don't go to the comment section straight away. Uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. By the way, the help would be appreciated. Obviously, we go into this game now. Rangers second place. Looking like they can actually go and push to confirm second place. Still a little bit to go. Still got to get to the split where ultimately things Things will get a bit more tricky, but right now they are looking the stronger team out of the three sides, uh, or as what we would have thought the two sides, to be, you know, battling for that second place, Aberdeen and Rangers, but now Rangers kind of pulling away a little bit, and they have hurt, yes, hats off them, a little bit of form, um, but I think this is really the test for Rangers to perhaps either show them that there has been sufficient progress made for them, or it'll be a reality check, and this is a, what that acts for Celtic is a way for us to kind of put this negativity, this doubt behind us, and ultimately show everyone that we are still the far superior team, uh, and the champions, because ultimately at the end of this season, we're still going to win the league. There's six points with a game of hand, so nine points basically in it, because I have very, very low doubts that we're going to, yeah, I'm very confident we can beat Dundee as it were meant to play in that game in hand I'm very confident we'll win that so you know you're looking at a 9 point gap here still and Rangers are going to struggle to try and close that down because ultimately yes we've dropped points this season but we've only lost twice Rangers have lost more games it's going to be difficult for them to close a 9 point gap so this game acts for something on, uh, on both teams which really makes it, you know a big want, a big need, an urgency to win for both sets of fans. And this is, you know, perhaps the most competitive and the most interesting old firm in quite a while. Uh, we had the first league old firm uh, back last year. We won 5-1. Um, that was interesting as it obviously was the first league old firm. Uh, and from that point on, you know, it's really been how how badly can Celtic damage Rangers. And from then, we've damaged them. And there's been a couple of draws in there. Um, both managed by the man who manages the game this Sunday, Graham Mutty. So, he has a plan ultimately in his head to try and go to Ibrooks, get another positive result that reflects good on Rangers, but this has got to be a big game for Brendan Rodgers. Brendan Rodgers has came under a lot of stick recently with the, the poor performances, the points dropped, the knocking out of Europe, the embarrassment in St. Petersburg. He has came under a lot of stick from not just the press and the media, but from some Celtic supporters. Some Celtic supporters really taking this extremely, the, the, the poor performances. But ultimately, we've always been, you know, matching this season up with last season, which is impossible to do. We're never going to have that type of season again, and it really frustrates me that we always try and compare to last season. To try and build on last season is an impossible feat. We'd have to win a European trophy to build on last season. And obviously that's just far too difficult to happen. So this season has been met with a lot of animosity, animosity from Celtic fans and a lot of critique. Uh, but this Sunday is a real you know, platform to try and put that behind us and go forward to get the win. Ultimately, I, I don't think this is one to be very confident about, especially with the, the morale around Rangers just now. They're very happy. They are very confident. They're on decent form. Uh, a lot of the players playing good football, but at the end of the day, the 11 players on the park, we still have the better team. So the expectancy is probably to go and win the game, but now more than ever is probably the least it's been. You know, when we went to Ibrooks last year, I said to myself, piece of cake, walk in the park, we're going to win the game. This year, it's a bit more laid back. I'm still confident we'll win the game. I really am. I think we're still the better team. When it comes to an old firm, we do step up our game, especially at Ibrooks in the past season, uh, since Brendan Rodgers has came in. Those three trips to Ibrooks would have been the better team. And uh, I can see it happening a fourth time. But it's definitely not as laid back as what the last few times have been. We walked into Ibrooks and strolled uh, in the 5-1 encounter last year. Uh, and the, the start of this season, we even went there 2-0. There was no difficult uh, phase in the game, it seemed. It's, we, were, we were ready. Ultimately, Rangers need to play the sort of football that they have played uh, when they've came to Celtic Park under Graham Mutty. And the, because what it has always been Rangers' downfall is they go for it. They're too confident. They go for it at the start of the game. They're knackered 10 minutes in and we take advantage. That is what always seems to happen when we give them a thumping. And uh, I don't know if that's going to come into play. They are very confident in the minute. Maybe they will go for it in the first 10 minutes. Maybe they'll go, right, 
This is it. Let's show them what we can do. First 10 minutes, try and bombard this. Nothing happens. Then we go and score a few goals. That could ultimately happen. But ultimately, I think Graham Murray will be wiser and see past that completely. I will not be surprised if Rangers dominate a majority of the game this Sunday. I'm actually fully expecting that. I think Rangers will dominate. We've just got to be wise at the back. And ultimately, the back is where we, where we are always at our weakest. So, a lot of defensive concentration. We need a lot of that performance we got at Celtic Park against Zenit, where I, even Lustig and such, were on top of their game. Lustig won't be playing on Sunday, of course. But we need those players, Ayer, Simonovic, Boyata, to have big games. No lapses of concentration, 90 minutes. We don't want to lose this game. To lose this game, it would give Rangers so much false motivation that they can win the title. It's not going to happen. Rangers will not win the title this season. Fuck me, if they win the league now, it's going to fucking come back to bite me in the arse, isn't it? Um, but I'm fairly confident we'll win the league. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm partly confident for this game on Sunday. But as I've said, definitely a more competitive fixture than it has been for the past year or so under Brendan Rodgers. Uh, and it'll be interesting. It will be interesting. As for the team, I think we've got to, you know, we've got to completely reevaluate what we do. The teams that we have played this season are ultimately probably what's led us to a lot of bad performances, a lot of negative performances, and a lot of negative, you know, stick from the crowd. Uh, the, the, all this, you know, we've been playing pish and all that. I think this weekend, what I would like to see is along the roots of how we played the second half last week against um, Morton. I thought the change at half time when we took off Sinclair and brought on Odson Edward made a fantastic... And obviously we were only playing Morton, who are in the division below. No disrespect to Morton at all. But, you know, still you could see the change of how we played football, how creative we were, just how much changed when we brought on Edouard and took off Sinclair. Has Sinclair took his foot off the pedal? I think that is a, an answered question, yes. I don't think he's been as good as what he was last season. Statistically, that might not show... Um, but he has seemed a little bit flatter this year in his game, and he's even come out and said his game is different, I just don't think it works completely, and that's why I'd start Edward this Sunday, I'd have Edward and Dembele, Dembele is picking up this little bit of form, he is a, an absolute, uh, no question about it, start the game on Sunday, he needs to start the game, but I would love to see a stick with that kind of 3-5-2 um, sort of formation that we played last week in the second half of that game. It's not really a 3-5-2 because you still have Tierney coming in and playing in the defence a lot. So it's really difficult to explain, but you know what I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about my team, the team that I'd be starting in goals, it's got to be De Vries because it's the only option. I wouldn't debut Scott Bain um, in, in this fixture. I, I just wouldn't. Uh, and the back four slash three that I would have, mainly it's mainly three when you think about it. Boyata, Semenovic and uh, Ayer I would start at the centre half positions. I think Kompa could ultimately play. But um, he didn't have the best start last week. He did come into a bit of game as it went on. But I think his nerves did show a little bit and that's why I wouldn't start him yet in an old firm game. There could be an error in there. And I have the full confidence that he will be fantastic for Celtic moving forward. I really do. I think he'll be a big, big player. But I wouldn't start him on Sunday. I would bring back Bayatan to the team who has played in this fixture uh, numerous times. And performed really well numerous times. And see how he gets on. I'd play those three at the back. Then I'd have that kind of middle five. Where you have Tierney on the left. Who ultimately can still come back and play as a wing back. Uh, and play in that full back and a winger kind of role. He does really well at it. He's a fantastic at attacking as we know and defending. So why not use those strengths and do what we are doing last week the second half against Alad. Have him in the left, Forrest in the right, no doubt about that. The three in the middle, Brown and Cham, and I'd be starting as the fifth man. You have a couple of options in there. You have Masonda, who could play in the kind of central attacking role. Um, you have Kuasi Abui, uh, who could also come in there as he started against Zenit. Um, but I would probably go with McGregor. Um, I just feel like he offers that attacking attribute to the game but also he can come back hold a little bit more more than Masonda could and I'd deploy Monda and Masonda a little, a, little, a little bit later a little bit later in the game I'm talking so fast um, but McGregor I would start I would start him I think he's always been quite impressive in the old firm games I enjoy watching him he loves to get himself a goal so I'd have Brown and Cham and McGregor in the middle three and up front I'd have Dembele and Edouard hopefully they can they have a nice little dynamic about them I've always thought so when they play together there's a nice dynamic sometimes the finishing can be questionable but there is no doubt that that you know kind of link up play between them is there they're fantastic at movement uh, Edouard came on last week and the first thing I said was Jesus Christ his movement is fantastic he was getting in behind he was getting out wide he was staying in the middle he was doing everything he was making a lot of movement making a lot of good passes and ultimately made one of uh, the goals in the game so I'd have those two up front and hopefully Dembele will be able to continue this little bit of goal scoring that he's picked up and show the player that he is let's show that he's far better than fucking Alfredo Morelos because he was born offside and I expect him to be offside I might actually put a quid on that 10 offsides at least for Alfredo Morelos
why not? Might give it a go. That's the team that I'd play. Um, but ultimately, it's a game which I'm looking forward to. Um, I, it, could it be? Could it spark a title challenge? That is the question that is surrounding this game. Will it spark a title challenge? If Rangers win, is there a title race? Ultimately, there's still six points in it. We've got a game in hand. We're three points clear without that game in hand. So if we win a game in hand, six. It's still going to be difficult for Rangers. Is it quite a title race? Who knows? Still a bit to go. Get into that split. Get the second, the, the last league old fun play. And then maybe we talk about a title race. But it certainly will give Rangers motivation. And I'd love to kill that motivation on Sunday. Absolutely murder it. Butcher it. Limb for limb. Oh, I sound bitter at this point, but honestly, I would just love to get a big win. After the disappointment which was a match at Hugman A, I think this is important to grow, go out and show really what we can offer uh, with the team we've got. My score prediction, I am going to go for Celtic to go to Ibrox and win 3-1. I think Rangers will get a goal. Both teams like to score in these matches uh, more, more than often. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 Celtic win with Dembele bagging two of the goals and James Forrest to get the third. Um, I think that's a decent enough prediction. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts towards the match, your thoughts towards my thoughts, and uh, also your score prediction. And uh, aye, until next time, see you later.